Hey, welcome back to Crimes and Closets. This is Beth in my closet in North Carolina. And this is Christy in my closet in St. Louis. And happy Monday. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Still <laughs> haven't made that shirt. Have y'all looked? Nope. No, I, I haven't looked, <laughs> which means I haven't made one either. Yes, exactly. It's going to be okay. We yes. hope that everyone is safe after Hurricane Ian has blown through and up and around the East Coast. We're yes. still on the front end of it. It's only in Florida right now as of recording. So it's a little nerve wracking. It is. It is. I've got friends down there and... And one of which, you know, was sending us videos and she was in St. Pete of her fence. She thought it was going to blow away, <laughs> but it didn't. <laughs> Did it it's, ever? It, with, it, no, it stayed there. And actually she was, it was funny because she said, I have to decide where to sleep tonight. And I was like, why? What do you mean? Like all of your bedrooms have windows in them. And she's like, yeah, but my bedroom is directly across from that one piece that keeps blowing. And I'm afraid it's going to come through my window at night. And I was like, oh yeah, I'd be moving to a different room. But I think she stayed in her room anyway. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is so scary. Yeah, it is. So anyway, but and we have Hope the music festival good. this weekend. Yeah, yeah, outside okay. on a beach. <laughs> I was just telling Christy, I'm like, I need to get one of those bags for my phone to like keep it waterproof or whatever. Not waterproof, but like mm -hmm. I don't know. And Ooh, so well, I can change it to myself. It's gonna blow away and get wet. <laughs> <laughs> I might post a picture. Of, <laughs> yes. yeah. I might post a picture of like if it's crazy on the you, on the pod. Yeah, you totally should. We want to see you. We want to see you this yeah. weekend. <laughs> braving braving what's the remnants of Ian. Yeah, hopefully it is the remnants. Yeah, no kidding. Anyway. But yeah. anyways, so there's that. What's going on with you? Yeah. Not a whole lot, just uh, it's October. Thank goodness. That means it's not September. So we said goodbye to Serial Killer yes. September, which yes. was fantastic. And hello to your birth month. Yes. Hello. It's almost Scorpio <laughs> season. Not yet, but almost. Oh, okay. What does it start? 22nd or something like that? that 21st. Yeah. Days? Yes. A couple mm -hmm. weeks. So. And Halloween. Halloween special yes. with what happens in the woods. And so excited. Halloween in general. I mean, I have my costume. I'm ready to go. Yeah. It's good. Tell them. I tell the am people. going to be a handmade. <laughs> I got a handmade costume. And I Are you June Osborne? Me trying it on. <laughs> yes, yes. And I said, oh, blessed day. <laughs> Praise be. <laughs> Praise be. I, sh I showed Emery a picture, the picture I sent you last night, and he was like, I don't want you to break character the whole time. Like, yeah. just like, never don't, look up. Don't smile. <laughs> don't look up. Don't smile. Don't like, just, you know, be, be like, blessed be. <laughs> like, whatever. May the like, Lord open. <laughs> yes. I need to, I need to write down all of the all of the sayings that I should just say the whole time. But anyway, <laughs> it's me and I'll another help. girl from the neighborhood. Oh my gosh. So you have to stand side by side because you're walking partners, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's how we plan on walking through the hood when we go trick or treating is we're just going to walk together <laughs> with your heads down. <laughs> oh my gosh. Heads that's going to be so creepy. I'm Someone so else needs to it. watch our kids because we can't. <laughs> can't look up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no eye contact. Um, I went very simple this year. I usually go really big for Halloween costumes. I was Cruella DeVille last year. It was fantastic. This year I got a t-shirt or sweatshirt with a big blood stain on it that says I'm fine. <laughs> Fair. Because <laughs> I am fine. It's fine. <laughs> so that's what I, I am this year. I'm, I'm a fine You're just murder fine. victim. Right. Fine. <laughs> Fine. That sounds fantastic. I've seen that one as I'm scrolling through the Instagram. Yeah, the gram. I think you sent it to me and I was like, oh, I totally bought that. <laughs> it's totally my costume. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it you that did that? Okay. Yeah. I know somebody sent it to me and I was like, I already bought it. <laughs> yep. Done. Add to cart. <laughs> 
Oh, well, yeah. anyway, so we got anything else going right now? No? We don't. I have a crime story for you that's not a serial killer, but is a doozy, if you want to dive into that. Okie dokie. Sounds All good. right, here we go. Okay, I have a very special case for you today. A special mm-hmm. one? This case was recommended by a really famous true crime podcast host. (laughs) You may have heard of her. (laughs) Her name is Christy. And she (laughs) co-hosts the podcast Crimes and Closets. Do you know her? No, nothing. I do. Do you know her? I know her. I do know her. She's a pretty phenomenal person. Phenomenal. She may just be my best friend. <laughs> She's the real I thought that too. <laughs> yeah, you say that. And she is also. So this is your case that you sent to me. Oh gosh, I'm so excited. Yeah. So this is the case of Fabio Simantilli. <laughs> Do you even know anything Fabio. about this case? Um, I know basics okay. because I came across it, I saw and then I was like, this is going to be done at some point. And then I'm like, I'm sending it to Beth. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it was worth it's it. It's worth <laughs> it. it is, it's a ride. Okay. I think probably because his name was Fabio. Oh, I was like, I know. oh. <laughs> he is fabulous, <laughs> yes. by the way. Mm-hmm. Fabulous. Okay. Is he like a, a fashion or hair? He's a hairdresser. Hairdresser. Yes. Yeah. Couldn't remember. And, and we're going to, uh, to LA. Yeah. Yay. Okay, so Fabio was born July 13th of 1967. This makes him a cancer. He was born in Toronto, Canada. His parents, Luigi and Maria Simantilli, had immigrated to Canada from Italy. If you can't tell, there's a little Italian flair. I was going to say. <laughs> That's a little bit. Yes. Obvious, but and Fabio. Luigi. Fabio. Luigi and Maria and Fabio. He had two sisters. So Fabio got married and he had a son that he named Luigi after his father. But after a few years, he and Luigi's mom separated. There's not a lot said about her. There was no bad blood. As far as what I can tell, he was a nice guy and they just, they didn't work out. And then in 1997, he married a beautiful brunette, also Italian, named Monica Crescentini. Crescent. Fabio, Mary. Fabio, yeah, Fabio. Yeah. Yes, Fabio and Monica. I wasn't sure if you were saying dad remarried. <laughs> he is the dad. Wait a minute. He was married before. He had a son named Luigi. Oh, Luigi. Okay. Okay. Sorry. But, and Luigi is also Fabio's father. So I'm sorry. Could you, sorry. Could you keep I'm up, sorry. please? <laughs> I, I'm tr- okay. <laughs> it's okay. I can set you straight. Don't worry. Okay. So he's remarried now to Monica. Monica was a makeup artist, and Fabio, like we said, was a hairstylist. He had a very successful business with his sister in Canada, and Monica was one of his clients. So that's how the two of them met. Very sweet, meet cute, romantic love story the two of them have. They fell in love, whirlwind romance, got married. They were very happy together. They lived in Toronto, and the two of them went on to have two daughters together named Jessica and Isabella. And they're all beautiful, literally every single person. Mm -hmm. The sisters, the parents, Fabio, his family. Everybody's pretty. Not surprised. I know. Fabio and Monica were very in love, and he called her his queen. Fabio is described as larger than life. He had a beautiful Canadian accent, which sucker for an accent. It's not surprising. Mm -hmm. He was said to have made people feel in a positive light and that he had a beautiful smile, infectious laugh, charismatic personality, and a positive attitude. Oh, he sounds like a fantastic person. I think he was fantastic. He went by the name Big Daddy. And he, yeah, he had like hats and stuff that had like Big Daddy on it. And he was very beloved by his family, his friends, his clients, his business partners, everybody. Fabio's business began to expand and he grew somewhat famous internationally when he and his sister became platform artists. Have you ever heard of that? 
No, I don't know what that is. So Fabio and his sister would travel around the world with a group of other people and perform on stage to demonstrate hairstyling techniques. And they would like motivate other professional hairdressers. And they also would compete in hairstyling competitions, which I did not know was a thing, but it's a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They won multiple awards for their skill and expertise expertise. And because of this, Fabio became extremely prestigious in the beauty community. He just, everyone knew him. He was world renowned. He was just, if you were in that Mm -hmm. industry, you had heard of Fabio. Right. Mm -hmm. So because of all of this notoriety, he was noticed by a big hair care company called Wella. Have you ever heard of Wella? I hadn't either. So they're a division of Procter & Gamble. And they're one of the world's leading beauty companies. They own like Clairol, OPI. You've probably heard of those. Mm, those are okay. the more like, but, yeah. but they're a division of Wella or they're branches from Wella. So in 2001, Wella, this big company, hired Fabio as their vice president of education, hmm. which is a pretty big okay. deal. So he, mm-hmm. Fabio, and his wife, Monica, and their two daughters moved to Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be of lights. <laughs> Fabio's son from his first marriage, Luigi, he stayed in Toronto with his mom, but they remained really close forever throughout his life. Mm. So the Cementillis bought a very luxurious home in an upscale neighborhood in Woodland Hills, California. I'm sure you've heard of Woodland Hills. It's right mm. outside of L.A. While in California, Fabio's career continued to grow and he became even more famous in the beauty industry. So he was sort of like a hair care guru, just like really Mm -hmm. well respected. Mm -hmm. The family thrived in L.A. They had a lot of friends. They did a lot of things within their community. They were always hosting parties and dinners and Monica was always cooking for everyone and she loved it. She's, you know, this big Italian family who just had this big extended family. Fabio loved to sit on his back patio in his favorite chair and smoke cigars and sip tequila. <laughs> oh, perfect. It's a perfect life. Perfect life. Fabio had a pretty big social media following and he would post videos and like inspiring messages and pictures for his followers. A lot of them were from that patio that like in his favorite chair on his patio. He had a segment on social media called Fab Style Fridays, which is really cute. And he would do hairstyles and, you know, just hair care tips and stuff. I watched a few of them and he really does seem like he has like a larger than life personality. He's so positive. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. good morning, beautiful people. Like, you know, just so he's just, he seems awesome. He's very likable, very genuine. Mm -hmm. So he continued to hit milestone after milestone professionally. He was happy. His kids was happy. Monica was happy. They're head over heels for each other. Super in love. They're the it couple. He's like living the Hollywood dream. Like, it Mm -hmm. sounds fabulous. Mm -hmm. Until. Until it's not. Until it's not. (laughs) So that brings us to January 23rd, 2017, which was a Monday. Fabio was 49 years old. And his wife, Monica, she wasn't home that day. She'd went out shopping. She went to the grocery store, Target. At around 5 p.m., Monica and Fabio's daughter, Isabella, who was 16 at the time, came home from her after-school activities. The house was quiet when she walked in, but she noticed footprints all over the house and what looked like blood. Mm. So she is, like, walking around trying to figure out what's going on. She's very confused. She wasn't sure at first, like, what she was really looking at. And when she got onto the back patio, she saw her dad... Fabio slumped over in his favorite chair, covered in blood, with a pool of blood around him. Oh, my gosh. 16. Yes. Awful. So, of course, she's totally freaked out. She calls 911. She called her mom, and the police and emergency personnel came immediately. Monica came home immediately. Fabio had been brutally beaten and stabbed multiple times in the face and upper body, And he was pronounced dead at the scene. 
Wow. Oh my gosh. And he's in his favorite chair. Yeah. So he was just sitting there enjoying his cigar and tequila. Probably. Oh. As police began searching the home, they found no forced entry, but the house had been ransacked. The master bedroom mm. in particular was totally torn apart and it did appear that there were some things missing or stolen. Also missing from the garage was Fabio's black Porsche. So oh. somebody stole his car. So it did appear to investigators that this may have been a robbery gone wrong. That maybe mm -hmm. Fabio, they didn't expect him to be home and he startled them and was killed. Maybe because he saw them. But he was sitting in a chair. It's not like he was coming after Right. Them. That's exactly right. You know, like, hey, what are you doing in my house? <laughs> he was just sitting. No, but it's also possible that they came in to rob the house and then they were like, oh, crap, there's a guy sitting out there. We need to take care of him. Gosh, well, just run out. Then. Well, yeah, true. That's my However, opinion. But anyway. Right. And when you're on the mm. right track, there were a lot of stab wounds and a lot of blood. So it seemed to have been overkill. You know, like if you mm -hmm. wanted to incapacitate somebody so you could get away, you're not going to kill them a bunch of times and like leave them in a mm -hmm. pool of blood in this manner. Kill them a bunch of times? Right. <laughs> I said that. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just had to put that one out. <laughs> Please only kill people one time. Thank you. Only one time. Only one time. <laughs> one time we'll do it. Okay. <laughs> In the LA area <laughs> during this time frame, there were a lot of, uh, there was like a rash of burglars that were being done by, by men. So these burglars mm -hmm. were hitting very affluent upscale homes and ransacking and robbing them in under five minutes. And there were a bunch of them, oh, wow. like a dozen of them being done. And they were called the knock-knock burglars. That seems like a, uh, I mean, that they had it down to a science. Because if you're in that area, I'm sure these houses are huge and you've got a lot of ground to cover. And so, like, they knew where they wanted to go, what they wanted to do, and get in Yeah, they were like expert burglars. Knock-knock mm -hmm. burglars. That's what they were called because they would knock on the door and if no one was would answer, then they would go around back and gain entry from an unlocked door or a window, or they would break in sometimes from the back, and they would burglarize the home. Again, they knew right what they were going for. They would mostly go to the master bedrooms. They would steal safes and jewelry and money, any weapons in the house, anything they could walk out with super quickly mm -hmm. before anybody even knew they were there. Police, anybody. Mm -hmm. Now, these homes, like I said, that they're breaking into, they're very affluent homes. And these are million, millions of dollars, these homes. And so they all have security systems. They all have surveillance cameras. And so they see them on these surveillance cameras. And it's like three men. They're all in dark, wearing hoodies. They come in. They can see everything that they're doing. That seems like they don't have any question about where they're headed. Like they are professional robbers. Mm -hmm. They even hit homes like Nicki Minaj was one of them. Alanis, Stop. yeah, Alanis Morissette. Oh, they robbed the real, the other Fabio, not the real Fabio. They're all real, but the other Fabio, like Fabio, Fabio with the hair. Yeah, right, right. Wow. So police, it seems like I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm like honing in on this, but. That you wouldn't even have to know the layout of the house. Like, they are probably like, we do this all the time. And so we know where these people tend to keep mm -hmm. things. So let's just go to those specific places, get us whatever we can. That's exactly out. what they do. They go into the master closet, move clothes, find a safe, grab the safe. Like, it is very much like, this is where we're going first. This is where we're going second. This is where we're going third. And they all have a job. It's very systematic. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so police initially suspect that these men w were who did this to Fabio, that they had knocked on the door, he didn't answer, so they went around back to gain access to the home, and they found him sitting on the patio and killed him. Mm. The wrench in this plan is these knock-knock burglars never killed anybody else. They weren't known mm -hmm. for killing. It wasn't their MO at this point. They right. robbed empty homes, you know, but... Is it also possible that they thought the home was empty because he was in the back and were surprised? It's possible. It just doesn't seem right, but as I, likely. 
Yeah, I just feel like since they've never done that before, that maybe they would just then mm-hmm. run away if they. Oh, oh, we can't do it today. Right, do it tomorrow. Next house. Also, Fabio was wearing an eight thousand dollar Rolex. Oh, and it wasn't no, taken. It was still on him. So detectives, not quite like leaning in on this plan, but it's in the back of their mind. So they're still searching out other avenues of what might happen. They found blood at the crime scene around Fabio's body that was not a match to Fabio or any of the other Cimentilli family. So they suspected that whoever it did belong to was the killer. Mm-hmm. Fabio's autopsy revealed that he had been attacked from behind while sitting in his chair, like you said. He suffered seven stab wounds to the neck, chest, and thigh. His femoral and car- carotid arteries were both cut. So he bled out wow. very quickly, like within mm-hmm. a minute. A murder weapon was not found. Okay, missing from the home, from the garage was his car, obviously. There was like some jewelry and some other things that was taken, but the home security system and the DVR that's used to record it were gone. Located Mm. in the garage in a specific spot and the whole system was removed. So this leads police to believe that whoever had done this knew where that was located and planned Mm -hmm. it. Because right. they plan, they're familiar mm-hmm. with it. Yeah. So either it was removed beforehand or after the fact, whichever. But either way, they they don't think it was these like other burglars. This is not their mo at all. Mm-hmm. Two days after the murder, investigators located Fabio's Porsche abandoned in a parking lot five miles away from the home. There was no fingerprints, no DNA, nothing in the car. So they start gathering CCTV footage from the security systems of the neighbors' homes because everybody in this neighborhood had security. This footage showed that two unidentified men were hiding in front of the Seaman Tilly home. They had on dark clothes and hoodies that hid their faces. And on January 23rd at 4.15 p.m., they were seen running towards the front of the Seaman Tilly home. So remember, this is neighbors' cameras, so it's not on their home. It's just like you can see Mm -hmm. the road, you can see part of the yard, things like that. 35 minutes later at 4.50 p.m., they're seen driving quickly out of the Cimentilli's garage in Fabio's Porsche. Oh. 10 minutes later at 5 o'clock, Fabio's daughter came home. And then... Wow. Oh, wow. 10 minutes and this sweet girl would have walked in on. Holy yeah. cow. So police first are going to look at uh, the, the wife, wife Monica. <laughs> However, Monica is seen on CCTV footage exactly where she said she was during this entire time frame. She was at a grocery store called Roses. She was at Target. She's perfectly calm and normal the whole entire time. Right. So a memorial service is held for Fabio. And as you can imagine, floods of people in attendance. Fabio's wife and children and family are all devastated by his loss, especially in such a brutal way and that they don't really know what happened to him or why. Fabio was not mixed up in any illegal activity. He was not involved with criminals, like he didn't hang out with shady people, you know, he was very open. Mm. He had no enemies. Monica spoke right. at the memorial service and she talked about her and Fabio's love story, how she would never recover, you know, just how devastated they were as a family. Oddly, at the memorial service, there was a man who always seemed to kind of be around the family, but he, no one knew him really. So he was just mm-hmm. like kind of hanging around and like would come talk to Monica and, you know, was just there. And they were like, who is this guy? So he was introduced as Robert Baker and they were just told he was Monica's friend from the gym. Mm-hmm. So Robert was a racquetball coach at the gym that Monica and like some of her friends were members of. And I guess the two of them had become friends and he heard about her husband dying and just wanted to show his support. Okay, I'm side-eyeing this guy. (laughs) 
<laughs> have you have you seen this movie before? Okay. As weeks pass with no arrest, Monica called police every single day asking for updates. Who killed my husband? Tell me the suspects. Tell me what's going on. What evidence do you have? She called him every day. She mm-hmm. also was calling the life insurance company to get them to release the $1.6 million in funds from Fabio's life insurance. Huh. Monica's on the phone. Okay. That's interesting. I, I actually have a, a question for you on that. If this was your life, would that be the thing that you're concerned about at this point? I think I would be lying if I said I didn't think about it because I have three children to think about and their life has to go on and we have to pay our mortgage and right. This is why I'm asking. Cause that's what I'm curious about. Like how long after this is weeks. though? It's like just weeks. Mm-hmm. So that's at the point at which I'm like, well, would it be the first thing that's, or what is weighing on me right now? Because I feel like, I've got a little bit of time mm-hmm. before someone's going to come after me for right. something. And this will be settled before that. Point. Right. But agree, agree. I would be concerned because I'm not a working mm-hmm. woman. So clearly I need to make sure that money's coming from somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So, and I think you anyway, would, that's what I would asking. be thinking about keeping things as calm and normal as possible for your children. I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, she did not have young kids. Right. Their youngest was 16. Right. But still. Okay. So one thing also that police found very odd was that Monica never left the home. Which could be seen as trying to keep things as normal as possible. But she never acted afraid to be there. She never was like, my husband was brutally murdered in my home. And we don't know who did it. And maybe they're coming back. Like these conversations never happened. They even offered to like have security, like sit in front of her home or, you know, some give her surveillance and watch her. And she was like, no, she declined it. She wasn't interested. Mm-hmm. So that I think is weird because I would yeah, be terrified. First of all, I would not want to be in the house where my husband was brutally murdered. Like, no, thank you. Mm-mm. At least for a while. <laughs> That would would take me quite a moment. I'd have to go stay with my mom for sure. But I also would be scared thinking like, I mean, that's so invasive. Someone's in your home. Someone's come into your home that you don't know and done violent things. That's scary. Mm -hmm. So as weeks passed, Fabio's family and friends kind of started to grow suspicious of this kind of behavior. And also they were noticing that Monica and this Robert from the gym were starting to be in sort of a very close friendship more than they had ever. I mean, they didn't even know him up until this point. Now all of a sudden he's around. So the month after Fabio's death, Monica actually went to Las Vegas with Robert. Oh, so at that point, the family was like, "Mm, could you maybe look into Robert for us? Because we're starting to side. I am now too. Robert, do you have a question? No, I was agreeing, but it didn't come out. (laughs) Got it. Okay. (laughs) Robert Baker was no stranger to law enforcement. So he had been in the army in his early life. But then after that, he spent a few years in porn. Oh, Mm -hmm. okay. I'm not, no judgment there, but okay. (laughs) Army to porn to racquetball coaching in an upscale gym in L.A. Seems like a natural. That is a straight straight shot. (laughs) We've all done it, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the gym they worked at was just a few miles from the home. Like I said, Monica was a member. She had friends that were a member. Her friends knew Robert. They knew him as the racquetball coach. Robert also had a 1993 conviction for a lewd act against a 14 year old girl. Yeah. So come on, come on. Veered off the path, dude. So police put surveillance on Robert and started following him. At first, they were thinking that he may be one of the knock-knock burglars. Yes. And that he had been part of the team that had, because remember, that was 
initially their thought was that that's what had happened. They did confirm that he was not, in fact, robbing homes because the knock-knock burglars were continuing to vandalize home, rob homes, and Robert was not there. They knew where Robert was because they were watching him. And okay. so these robberies were still taking place. And they were like, oh, well, we were sitting in front of his house looking at him smoking on the porch when this happened. So it's not him. I don't know if he smoked. <laughs> right. I inferred that. Okay. However, they did find that Robert was frequently meeting up with Monica. Mm -hmm. They obtained cell phone records. And in those cell phone records, they confirmed that the two of them had made hundreds of calls and texts spanning over the past 18 months. Whoa. So whatever relationship they were having had been going on for like a year and a half. I think wow, some okay. may refer to that as an affair. Yeah, uh, yes, <laughs> I okay. would. So police find that in the months and weeks leading up to Fabio's murder, that Monica and Robert had made an elaborate plan for Fabio to be alone in the home and for Robert to break in and murder him and make it look like a robbery. And for Monica mm. to be out of the house during this time so that she could collect the $1.6 million in life insurance. Right. They confirmed that Monica provided Robert with a layout of their home, Fabio's routine, the home security and surveillance information, and that she had alerted Robert when she left the home that Monday and said, Fabio's alone. No one else is in the house. Mm. She even mm -hmm. called their security company and had a live feed of their surveillance sent to her phone. And she shared that feed with Robert. So Robert knew exactly where Fabio was and what he was doing before he even walked in. Is that not the dumbest thing anybody has ever this done? This is 2017. We know yeah, about cell phone records. Well, the, the security place... Do they not know the security place keeps records? So oh, yeah. if you're sending a live feed, they're like, yeah. Okay. Whatever. Well, then they stole the security whatever. equipment, though. So they can't get that. But but it's got to be in the cloud then somewhere. The, the cloud existed. I don't then. know, actually, because it had a DVR on it, it said. And they said the DVR was stolen. So I don't know if everything was just recorded yeah. on like a box, okay. like a DVR box. Okay. You know, not necessarily a cloud. That's the way it made it sound like to me. Right, 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 right. So, because they don't have any video of the murder. Okay. Okay, photos of the mor memorial service were also provided by Fabio's family and friends. And in some of those pictures, there was Robert, who was there. And it's very clear that he has bandages on his hands and arms. And this was days after. Uh, Why would he show up? Okay. That is just the dumb. Yeah, that's stupid. Okay, now because Robert had a record, he was already in the police's database, including his DNA. Oh, Lord. So they me. ran DNA against his DNA against the unknown DNA found at the crime scene, and it was a match. So Robert mm -hmm. was there. Nice. So on June 14th, 2017, almost five months after Fabio's murder, police arrested Monica Cimentilli and her secret lover, Robert Baker. Both of them were charged nice. with first degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder with special circumstance allegations of lying in wait and murder for financial gain. So these charges all together make them eligible for life in prison without the possibility of parole because oh, wow. they have those special circumstance charges. California is so weird. Do you know? It, well, it is. Do you know that um, my favorite term is that lying in wait term? <laughs> it's, it's a very common term. And I feel like the day that we learned what it was, which I can't remember what, what case it was. but It was the Gretchen. It was the Gretchen. Oh, Gretchen Anthony. Conspiracy. Yes. That's why I remember mm -hmm. it. I, and that's the only reason I remember specifically because I was like lying in wait. Because mm -hmm. we looked it up. I feel like we looked yeah. it up during the episode. It's illegal. <laughs> illegal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they both pled not guilty. Fabio's family and friends were shocked. Now they knew Monica was doing some shady stuff, but they were shocked that she had conspired to murder Fabio. 
Mm-hmm. Everyone who knew the couple knew them to be in love and happy. One friend of Monica's did speak out. I saw in an interview that Monica had shared with her that she was like lonely in LA and that maybe she had had thought about moving back to Toronto, but nothing that would indicate a secret love affair or homicidal thoughts or anything like that. Fabio was very busy. He was famous. He had this huge business. It's possible, I guess, that Monica was like feeling left out or feeling disconnected from their life there, but like, just move, girl. Take right, your boy right. mm-hmm. and jet. <laughs> Go back to Canada. You don't got to kill him. The prosecution is alleging that Monica was the mastermind behind this whole entire plan, and that the motive was the life insurance that she was supposed to get upon Fabio's death. She had Robert commit the murder. One thing that we have no information on is that there was an accomplice. Because remember, Mm. there were two men on the CCTV footage going into the house at the time that Fabio was murdered. So who is the other man? Who is the other person? It's not Monica. Because she was at Target. Mm -hmm. And since Monica and Robert are saying that they're innocent, they aren't talking. They aren't saying who that it was. So we don't know. So there's a third person. This person is described as a male between 5'6 or 5'7". It's like a Mm. short male. No offense. Um, A motion was filed to drop the special circumstances charges that could result in life without parole. So they were saying, like, we don't deserve life without parole. Let's drop. Can can you please drop these circumstances, blah, 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 that make us eligible for that? That was denied in January of 2021. Mm. Okay. So I went in real deep here after this because that's it. If you're researching this case, that's it. That's all you're going to find. There's literally nothing. Huh. Nothing since that motion was rejected in January of 2021. So I'm like, where are they? Okay. Like we're over a year out. There's no news. What's happening? I looked through court records and calendars and like all this stuff. I ended up finding case numbers and like complaints filed and just all kinds of stuff. And I did finally, after a lot of time and $5, that I paid to the L.A. County <laughs> Court <laughs> Records Department, I found that they are going to be tried jointly in front of a jury of their peers on October 3rd of 2022. So just in a few oh. months. And that is expected to last 14 days. Wow. Wow. So we're going to have to keep an eye on this mm-hmm. one too. <laughs> right now, they're both being held without bail in a California prison. Monica is 49 and Robert is 59. Okay. So in one interview that I saw of Fabio about his life, he is giving an interview about like his career and his life. And he says, mm-hmm. quote, I want to be remembered for the relationships I've built. I want to be remembered for the way I've made people feel in a positive light. And if it was negative for any reason, it's because I was honest. So let's all remember Fabio that way. Yes. I will be following this trial. I will be updating you. I want to know who that person was with Robert during Fabio's murder. So if I hear anything, I will definitely let you know. I was thinking about this, and honestly, I'm not sure Monica is a smart lady. I'm just not sure about it. But if she is, if she has any brains about her at all, she will take a plea deal and roll on Robert and this other person. Because she wasn't present during the murder, but she's been charged with first-degree murder. So if she takes a plea deal, maybe they could just charge her with, like, conspiracy to commit murder or aiding and abetting. And she won't get mm-hmm. life without parole. But she deserves life. I'm not saying she doesn't deserve I'm sorry. She absolutely oh, you're does. Just I'm just like... saying if she's smart, she'll tell the truth about what happened and she'll implicate the people that actually were like the trigger men, so be it. Right. So she gets a lesser sentence and we know exactly yeah. what happened. And or why and everything. She has to yeah. answer everybody's questions. It's a Monica yeah. tell-all. I don't know that she'll do that because maybe she's so committed to Robert she would never, but she's a monster either way. Fabio was a uh, great yeah, man. Agreed. He deserved a lot better. He deserved so much better. Their poor daughter. 
all the kids, but especially the one that she let her daughter find her dad like that, too. I know. Like, she did that on purpose. I, see, that's what I would like to know is that was she not expecting her daughter to come home? I think that was her daughter's normal routine was to be home around that time. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, mate, yeah, I don't know. I think she, Monica, just wanted to be like, not it. Allegedly. Allegedly. It's all alleged. You're guilt, you're innocent yeah, until I mean, proven guilty. I'm, I would never, ever, 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 ever plan something like this. But I feel like if I were to, I would make it so that I was the one that found him. Yeah. Not my children. Because if if he's the one you want to get rid of, don't hurt no, your kids like that. No, they're going to be hurt enough don't. by their dad being murdered by their mother. Stop it. Yeah. They don't need to see yeah. that. Oh. <sighs> I'm so Fabio Cimentilli. Oh, thank you so much for coming. I hope I did you proud. <laughs> thank you so much, Christy, for thank you, Christy. bringing that to us. I don't <laughs> know you, but shout out. <laughs> I can't believe I got a shout out on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> You're happy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sad. Oh. Gosh, so I, I mean, and you only have to murder people one time. That's your takeaway. Just, just once. Just, <laughs> I'm one so sorry. I could not let it go. So I, I couldn't let it go. <laughs> I, was, I couldn't let it go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, um, I when I, I don't remember when I found that case. I had it bookmarked for the longest time on, and I literally, it's like one of the ones that I saw across my like toolbar every time. And I would just like, forget about it. So all I knew was that he was, again, I forgot that he was hair. I thought fashion or hair and that possibly his wife orchestrated his murder. Mm -hmm. That's all I knew. Cause I didn't, I didn't dive in. I saw it and I'm like, Fabio hairdresser murder. Mm -hmm. done. I guarantee <laughs> too, whatever you saw of him was this one particular picture that is always posted of him. And he is like, he is very infectious, like even just to look at. It. He's mm -hmm. just like he's not like this crazy handsome man or anything. He's big daddy. But like he just has a a genuineness to him that's like kind of makes mm -hmm. you stop and be like, "Well, what's this about? Like why would someone hurt this man?" You know? Yeah. The only link I had saved was a people magazine. Mm -hmm. So whatever was in yeah. that is what I Oh, I'm sure I read that one. <laughs> I li I'll link a couple of his videos too, in case you guys want to just go and like hear him. And I'd imagine, yeah, you watched it, so I I can't imagine they would take that stuff down because I'm sure the hairdressing industry still looks to him. It's not like it was that long yeah. ago. I mean, I saw this interview that he was giving about somebody was interviewing him like about his career and stuff, and it's still up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like there's stuff on YouTube and stuff. Hmm. And there's snippets Thank of you. it in the in the 48 hours and all that kind of stuff. Right. Too. So you're welcome. I I appreciate you covering that. Thank you for the suggestion. It was Christy that we don't I'm know. excited. <laughs> yes. Yes. You should send her a t-shirt. I should send her a t-shirt. <laughs> I'm gonna you're right. You're right. <laughs> oh send my gosh, could you imagine Christy if from nowhere? If that's what we did was send everyone a suggestion, we'd be broke. Oh, because y'all send suggestions all the time, and I'm not complaining about it. We have we have not had to figure out what case to cover. It, what I mean it has to be I'd a, say year. a year. Yeah, yeah, we've not had to figure nope. it out. The only ones we figure out is on Patreon because we're like the ones that we thought we would need to cover that are just sitting on our list mm -hmm. <laughs> that we picked our own. Mm -hmm. That's where we cover them is on Patreon. Oh my gosh. Y'all are the and awesome. This month on Patreon, it's my birthday, and I'm covering a story that I have been obsessed with for years, literally. Oh, that's right. That's mm -hmm. right. You read a book. So October a book. Patreon. Right. So now's awesome. the time. Awesome. 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 Excited. Yes. Join join Patreon now, guys. You, you will have a plethora of stuff to listen mm -hmm. to, by the way. So several. So anyway. Thank you for covering it. Thank you to Christy for bringing this Thank suggestion. You, Christy. We're not sending, we are not sending t-shirts out for your suggestions. I'm sorry we would go broke. Um, we do love your suggestions though. So keep bringing them mm -hmm. in, send them to us. 
email us, find us on social media, find us on Patreon if you love what you hear and you want to hear more because it's even more exciting over there. And just always remember, the world is scary. People suck. Hide in your closets.